Hey Dungeon Bags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and welcome to the 26th edition of Rapid Fire Reviews, the series where I talk about a lot of different albums and EPs in one shot. This is the third edition of this series in Rapid Fire Reviews Week, a thing that I decided to make happen because I fell behind on 128 albums and EPs throughout the course of 2019. Although, in a way, it kind of worked out to be a treat for you guys because it seems like Rapid Fire Reviews tends to be one of my more beloved series on my channel. I guess people prefer me giving quick 10 second opinions on albums and EPs rather than droning off for 10 or 15 minutes. Either way, this week has been a lot more fun than I anticipated, and I'm ready to dig into 32 more albums and EPs. If you haven't already watched the first two videos in this week's special, I would definitely suggest you do, because I'm doing all of these in order from earliest to latest, so you'll be able to get through my entire opinions from the entire year if you, if you watch from beginning to end. But anyway, Let's just get right into it. You know, before I listened through this album, I had the same opinion on Billie Eilish that I think a lot of people my age probably think about her, that she's an overhyped edgelord that only teenage girls listen to. But after I took the time to actually sit down and give this album a critical listen, I've gotta say, I'm a fan. This project is amazing cover to cover. Very rarely is there an instance where a track on this album doesn't completely blow my expectations out of the water. Love the blend of pop, electro, trap, hip hop. Billy's vocal tones, her harmonies, her songwriting are just so advanced for her age. It's unbelievable. The production is continuously slick across this album. I love that Phineas handled it for the entire project. And yeah, if it weren't for Headspaces, this would be my album of the year. This is definitely one of the more interesting drum and bass albums that I've heard this year. I mean, I enjoy it about as much as I could for being 80 minutes of drum and bass and nothing else. I mean, of course it does get a little bit tiring, but at least the ideas are frequently enough pretty original to keep my interest. Not something that I can really see myself coming back to in the future, but I think fans of genuine drum and bass should enjoy this project. I will admit, Volant going down the synthwave avenue for his first studio album was a bit of a tough pill to swallow for me considering I enjoyed his groovy, funky style a lot, but I do think he does the genre justice and flips it enough in his own way that makes this album an interesting and memorable listen. Admittedly, I don't think I like this EP nearly as much as part one. The big highlight on this project for me is definitely Born to Survive. I think it's very ambitious, all the different styles that Zomboid tries to blend together, and I think it pays off extremely well. I also think that Zomboid did the mid-tempo sound justice on the song Endgame, and then Revival, I think is a decent cut as well, though I don't think it's nearly as strong as the song that it's so obviously succeeding, uh, Survivors. It's taken me a bit to admit this, but I genuinely think that this is the best multi-track project we've gotten from Shadiant thus far. On Divide, I think Shadiant does a great job of showcasing his signature sound while also thoughtfully blending in elements of his influences, and at the same time each song feels original and refreshing, and also the flow of this project is a huge plus. I certainly like this album more than Good Will Prevail, and honestly it might be Grizz's best project to date. In my book it does a really excellent job of creatively showcasing Grizz's wide range of abilities from his saxophone skills to his vibey productions to his more wobbly like UK dubstep influence stuff and also pairs with a lot of collaborators across this project that I feel like he has a lot of chemistry with. Don't think this album is perfect but I definitely think it's worth a listen. I did not listen to all that much Jai Wolf prior to this album so I guess I didn't really know what to expect but uh, it was a nice pleasant surprise I guess I'd say. The Cure to Loneliness, I'd say, is a lot more 80s influenced than I imagined it would be. The, I guess I'd say, sonic vibe of this album is like if Odezo were a synth-pop band in the 80s. That's really the only way I feel like I can describe it. And there are some genuinely beautiful songs on this album, enough that I'd say it's definitely worth a listen. This one, to me, was a pretty middle-of-the-road neurofunk album, which I'd say was a disappointment because, uh, you know, Drop Tech has done some great work in the past. There are a few really cool original ideas here and there, but in my opinion not enough to warrant this project's length. But of course it is neurofunk, so chances are I'm going to come back to this 
album more often than just your general drum and bass album, but probably less than something like Manifest or Outer Edges. I would say this is an above average pop album. I think Labyrinth, Sia, and Diplo make a pretty good combination on most of these tracks, and they keep it diverse enough to you know, retain my attention across this project, though not really original enough for me to see myself coming back to this thing over and over again. I was really looking forward to this album considering the first LS Dream album, Voyager, I think was one of the most uh, refreshing albums of 2018. However, I definitely do not feel the same way about this album. It came as a massive disappointment to me. Seems like those Brills production elements that I really liked being woven into LS Dream's music has kind of been stripped on this project. Seems like he kind of just took the easy route this time around and made the most like generic mid-tempo and freeform bass stuff he possibly could. There's a couple songs on this project that I thought were really fun listens, but beyond that it's just not for me. To me, this project feels much more like an album than Doomu's first under the Charlie alias. Still just as relaxing, but in my opinion a lot more raw and immersive. Where we get these little clips of Charlie, or at least I assume it to be Charlie uh, kind of voicing his frustration or like literally being able to hear a click track throughout the entirety of a song. Yeah, it's a cool little project. I mean, it's branding. Pretty much this entire project is centered around the branding of No Phone, but I think this is a decent project nonetheless. Didn't necessarily enjoy it in the way that it's like the most unique thing I've ever heard, but it all flows together pretty nicely. I like this one quite a bit more than 1788L's debut EP, though I don't think he's quite hit his full potential in that regard yet. But I feel like this EP is more thematic, more cohesive, it's a lot darker, and I guess you'd say more synthetic. It's a good listen, even if I don't feel like it represents 1788L's most most unique sounds. I haven't really loved a Black Bear project I've heard thus far, and that pretty much rings true on this one as well. I think sonically, it's a bit of a return to form for Bear. This album reminds me a lot of Digital Drug Lord in a lot of ways, albeit with, I'd say, much better lyrics. Really, the only songs I can see myself returning to on this project are the more electronic-influenced ones. This EP is okay, but I really don't feel like it holds a candle to some of Heckler's work over the last couple years, like 404 or Basic Bass Tune. Sure, there are some decent jams on this album. I especially enjoyed the tune with Hex Cougar quite a bit, but for the most part, I'm just wandering through this thing, wondering why it sounds like it could have released five years ago. You know, I appreciate Brondo for sticking it to the big guys by being able to follow his own career path with a cohesive brand that he's kind of put together and being able to craft an entire album and put that out independently. That's impressive. However, this album really just isn't for me. It sounds like a diet version of something we would have gotten from WeeWeck a few years ago. I've gotta say, at first, I was a little bit skeptical of Azoria Sky's ambition to make this album that combined, you know, chiptune and singer-songwriter together and the whole fact that it was being funded by Kickstarter, but I think this thing actually came out really nicely. For most songs here, the chiptune elements aren't too overwhelming, which is really nice because I primarily like Azuria Sky for her songwriting anyway. It's a subtle blend that really works and makes this album a really peaceful and enjoyable listen. You know, people always hate on Diplo for being too mainstream and for collaborating with too many pop artists or whatever, but tell me why he can do house music better than like 90% of people that do house music. It's hilarious, and also this EP is pretty good. This album, and I guess I'd say East Ghost in general, aren't really my thing. I mean, I can appreciate the detail in the production across this project, but for the most part, it just feels like these dark, kind of messy soundscapes that I just can't really get into. There are a few really good payoffs across this thing, but for the most part, it's just not for me. For me, this is the most straightforward and cohesive multi-track project we've gotten from Elohim by a long shot, which I'd almost say makes it her best work. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'd at least put it above her 2018 album. Really, the only thing that gets to me about this EP is just how straightforward she is. I mean, she starts off this project by illustrating a picture and then 
pretty much immediately explaining that and the majority of the EP is kind of like that. It doesn't leave a lot open to interpretation which was one of the things that I really liked about her early stuff. Definitely still a good listen though, I would highly recommend it. Wouldn't really say I enjoyed this album more than Gareth Emery's last couple solo albums, but I would generally say this album is a nice little listen and I think it'll especially be a treat for people who are more into Emery's trance side. I think more than anything, I'm just baffled to hear that an 18 track project is considered an EP. That aside, I probably would say this is my favorite from Cascade's Redux series so far. It's got a lot to offer, doesn't really get old super quickly. Personally, don't feel Time Spender is as strong of a project as FOOL's last EP. The ideas that make this project pretty diverse are there, but I feel like they don't really go anywhere most of the time. To me, they feel more like background music most of the time than fully fleshed out songs. I will say though, Neon is a solid jam, even though it reminds me of another song so much and I can't put my finger on what it is. Nope, nope, nah. -uh. I feel like this album just spits on all the progress that dubstep has made over the last couple years, either using outdated sounds or just generally not being able to adapt. I liked some of the reggae influence here and there, it definitely took me back to the heydays of bro step, but this overall was just not a good album. I mean, the mixing and mastering isn't even consistent. Yeah, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I actually prefer this album quite a bit to Emotion. Rather than just simply sounding like a throwback, I feel like this album takes those elements from Emotion and kind of revitalizes them with some flair from modern electropop, and it is a really, really solid pop album. Yeah, I don't like this EP as much as The Imperative, but the odds of me liking Metamaterial more than The Imperative were already pretty slim, I guess. But I do like how Vorso takes a different direction on this project. I wouldn't have liked this EP at all had it been just The Imperative 2.0. Focuses more on his funkiness, his grooviness, his ability to make some really cool house music, while still retaining that impressive cohesion and flow that The Imperative had. I love almost every song from this EP, and I definitely suggest you check it out for yourselves. This one made for a nice debut album in the regard that it does showcase a wide range of AU5's abilities, and for someone who just wants a nice taste of what AU5 is like, I think this album would be a good place to start, but for someone who's been listening to him for you know, years, like myself, this album doesn't feel like it pays off all that well, because on most of the songs that sound like your signature AU5, I feel like I've heard a million times already, and the songs where he's experimenting and trying something new, though I appreciate them for doing that, tend to kind of fall flat in one regard or the other. It's fine, but it's not spectacular. For me, it doesn't really live up to AU5's skill set. Not even joking, this is one of my favorite albums of the year right now. I think Kawhi nails the fusion of dubstep and metal on this project, and does it in his own distinct way that I can comfortably say I've never really heard before. The vocals are raw and emotional, the instrumentals are purely dark, unfiltered insanity. Yeah, this is the first multi-track tear-out project I've ever thought has hit the nail completely on the head. I think Skrillex and Boys Noise are really onto something with their blend of house on this EP. Unique, but at the same time very dancey. I love the sampling across this project. The production is masterful. Definitely one of my favorite projects from Skrillex in a while. This album is interesting in the regard that it does a really good job of being able to immerse listeners into the world of like early jungle and drum and bass. I guess there isn't really much to say beyond that. If you don't want to be immersed into that world, you probably shouldn't listen to this album. And lastly, we've got this Artificial Order EP from Nitrix, which I think is a nice return to form for him, especially since Created by Chaos for me kind of took an uncomfortable step in a different direction. This EP definitely feels more like the Nitrix we've come to know and love. It's more vocal-centric, more melodic, and with some improved production skills here. 
And that's about it for this edition of Rapid Fire Reviews. As always, if you want to check out any of the albums or EPs that I talked about in this video, you can check the Spotify links down in the description below. If you're new to the channel and want to see more content like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you liked this one, make sure to leave me a thumbs up. Anyway, I'm Landon Remixes, and I'll see you guys on Saturday. Peace.